you've reached Marissa with the Umbrian Sewist. Thanks for joining me today. Today is a, another Friday Sews. For anyone who doesn't know, Friday Sews is a hashtag that Jen and Today in Jen Sewing Room started to uh, give vloggers the opportunity to vlog on a weekly basis under that hashtag and just chit chat about what we've been up to, what we've been sewing, what we plan to sew and anything else. So I want to start by saying thank you so much to any new subscribers. I've had sort of uh, a bunch of new subscribers recently, and I just want to say thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. Um, I hope that uh, you're enjoying the content. And uh, yeah, I really appreciate um, the sub you subscribing and also really appreciate anyone who comments in the description box not description box, in the comments. Um, I love chatting with you and uh, yeah, really appreciate um, you participating. Uh, my name is Marissa, as I said. I live in Umbria. I'm an American who has lived here in Italy for um, four and a half years. Time flies. And yes, I love to sew, mainly garments, but I'm also getting into sewing basically anything. So um, if you like that, then I'd love it if you subscribed, if you haven't. And I will now stop talking about that and tell you what I've been up to. Now, this past week started um, with me making uh, something that's been on my list for a while, which is this sort of laptop case that is um, called the Preston laptop case. It's by Sotech Patterns. Um, I made one for my husband for Christmas. It's a fantastic pattern. Really, really enjoyed making it. And um, yeah, just really like the finish. Her, all of her patterns have a beautiful finish. And um, so if you haven't heard of her patterns, check them out. She does also have some free patterns that she does sort of step-by-step -step YouTube videos for. So I'll link that information below. But I made mine out of this absolutely gorgeous cotton and steel fabric that I've had in my stash for, well, I bought it in the U.S. when I lived there. So over four and a half years. And um, I don't know, I don't know when I bought it what I intended to do with it, but I only bought a meter, which is fantastic for these types of projects, but for anything else, not so useful like garments. It is, um, I don't know, it looks vintagey to me, but really enjoyed making this. I used a, um, a zipper tape that is sort of has a bronze teeth with um, a bronze zipper pull, and I lined it with the same fabric. Um, so yeah, that's super useful. Um, my old laptop case was quite literally falling apart and quite gross. So now I have this beautiful new laptop case that will make me very happy to use. So that is the first item I got sewn up. And then I had, um, obviously I have quite a bit of the fabric left, and I wanted to make sort of like a, um, a little pouch for all of the plugs and things when I travel. And so I did, I made that here. This is a pattern, it's a free pattern by the Apple Green Cottage. It's called the Boxed, um, boxed Bag or something. I'll put the details below. What I like about this pattern is that you actually box up here and down here. So typically with some of the patterns I've seen, you box just at the bottom, but this was quite fun. Um, I liked, it was quite, it's kind of a pain in the bum to do. Um, but the finish looks really nice. Um, I lined it with the same fabric and um, yeah, these come together super quick. Use the same sort of zipper tape. So I sort of have a matching set. So that's quite cool. Then I, um, I think I shared in my last video I'd made, I was sort of as part of cleaning things out, I had seen um, or found some, basically some quilting things that I had done. So basically I had lots of little tiny pieces and sort of quilted them together to make one big um, piece of fabric. And I just made um, some more of those boxy zipper pouches. I have absolutely no idea what I will use these for. Hopefully I will find a use, but um, yeah, quite fun. And, um, and yeah, I like the lining and yeah, easy and really satisfying make these take no time at all. And then I made um, a slightly larger one. So this was also fabric. Um, I used the solid piece on the inside and then I had this sort of quilted fabric that I used and um, 
yeah, so very satisfying. As I say, I have no, no plans, no idea what I will use these for, but there you go. Then the big project of the week, which you can probably see I'm wearing, is I made my first shirt and I made the Montana shirt by Itch to Stitch. This was um, a pattern that I had to said that I wanted to get made up as part of my autumn plans, autumn winter plans. And also, if you haven't checked it out, my last video is all about sort of my plans for Q1 or half of the plans for Q1 with the real focus on trying to sort of master a skill and that skill is making shirts. And uh, so yeah, I thought I would start off with this because it was in my autumn plans and why not start with that one? So this pattern, like I said, it's called the Montana Shirt by Itch to Stitch. It has a couple of options. The first being sort of this tie front option and then the classic. I made the classic because um, the tie front is a little bit shorter and um, I just it wasn't really the look I was going for. So I made the classic shirt. Um, I will say the instructions are fantastic. Um, I was struggling with the sizing. I wasn't sure what to what size to make. Um, mainly because my bust and my hip fell in the size 16, but my waist fell in the size 12. Now, um, thank you everyone who provided me with some feedback and comments and things on people who had made this before. And, um, they said, just go with your, um, go with like the size that makes the most sense. So I went with the 16. So that's what I cut out. Now, um, I cut that out, no problem, uh, lots of pieces. I think I made my life more difficult because as you can see, there is no difference between the front and the back of the fabric. And you will see that um, caused me to make a rather large error, which I will share in a minute. But um, this is fabric I've had in my stash for a long time. I bought it at Joanne's Fab Joanne Fabrics when I lived in, um, the US, so well, at least five years ago, probably. Um, it's a brushed cotton. I don't love the colors myself on me, um, but I had it and, you know, it's good I used it because, as I said, I made a rather large error, which is not fixable. So I'm not upset about it. Um, but yeah, so I use this fabric. This fabric is nice, but the problem is because the weave is quite loose it does sort of stretch. Now I had no issues with the collar. The collar was absolutely fine. I didn't have any stretching um, at all with the collar, but I think the issues come into play like more when you're trying to like have crisp corners and things like that. Like for example, on the pockets, um, that can make it a little bit more difficult. Um, but anyway, I'll pan back to sort of give you a view. I had the only thing I haven't done is put buttons on and honestly, I'm not 100% sure I am going to put buttons on because I have no intention of buttoning this up. And you will see in a minute, or probably already see, that I screwed up. So you can see here, this is where you would expect to have the cuff, but unfortunately, mine is here in the front. Okay, so basically what happened was, as I said, because there's no right and wrong side that's super obvious, um, I screwed up on the, I don't know, what do you call that placket? The cuff placket? The placket. So it's basically like, I don't know if you can see, but it's like in the front of my arm. So it just, no, it doesn't work. It doesn't work for many reasons. Now, one of the other, I will say I'm very quite, I'm very pleased with my pattern matching. So you can see I'm going, got good pattern matching. Now I like the shirt in the sense that I like the length of the shirt very, very much. So, and you can see, you can get the view of the pattern matching. There is no pattern matching on the side here. Okay, but that's okay. So yeah, I'm pleased with the pattern matching. I decided to go sort of in contrasting like opposites for the pockets, which is cool. I think that looks nice. Like I said, the collar went in, fantastic. 
Um, I'm very pleased with it, except for, yes, the cuff thing. Now, the only thing I will say, and I believe someone mentioned this, is the sleeves come up short, and I would absolutely agree with that. I would expect, um, I don't know, aren't, aren't they supposed to sort of come to here, like on collared shirts, like when you have your arm down? Um, I mean, I think they're probably like an inch short. Not If I hadn't screwed this cuff up, I probably would be okay. Uh, meaning I wouldn't worry about it. Like, it'd be fine. But yes, all in all, the, oh, the other thing I will say is there is a bust dart. Where is that? Here. I would say the bust dart isn't in the right place for me. Um, yeah, it sort of ends here in the pocket. But honestly, I don't see the point in the bust dart because it isn't a fitted shirt. Now, um, yeah, even here, it's not a fitted shirt. So... Um, and when I say that, I'm kind of thinking mentally, I'm sort of comparing it to one of the other shirts I want to make, which is the Cameron. And again, someone commented saying like, the, these are pretty similar, except for the Cameron has no bust darts and which is fine. Cause I just don't think it's made any difference on this particular shirt. Um, but yes, I have to say, I'm so pleased with it. Um, I did flat felt seams. So the entire shirt on the inside, um, I'll take it off, is completely, everything's enclosed. Um, I just really did enjoy the process. So you can see here, I've got all enclosed seams. Um, the cuff definitely was a little bit fiddly, like the, the sort of placket, but I am really pleased with how it looks. Um, I put in kind of a fun, um, uh, label that says keep smiling and um, yes I am very very pleased with it I am tempted I mean I'm just gonna I don't know I'm tempted to cut it into a short sleeve shirt but then I don't think I'd ever wear these colors in the um, spring and summer so I don't know saying that I do really like it and I do not um, I want to find a way to, to wear it. So one thought I had was, of course, just to roll these up. But anyway, so yes, one sort of success. I'm going to go with that. Um, so what am I going to work on next? Well, honestly, it's a little tricky because I don't have any fabric per se. Um... I would like to, to work on this one next because I really enjoyed the process of this. A lot of the techniques are fresh in my mind and I can see based on this pattern um, that they're also similar. So I would make the long sleeve um, shirt. This one has a little bit more of a curved hem, which is kind of fun. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's tricky. Um, I do have some like thin corduroy, but it's in a cream color. So I'm going to have to look around um, my fabric stash. As you can see behind me, I have a lot of fabric, but of course it's a lot of it. What I'm trying to do is pick um, something that has like isn't floral or isn't um, patterned so that I could wear it with a lot of different things. I do have a beautiful fabric that I purchased in Thailand. It's a Japanese cotton Um I purchased it many years ago. Let me get this, which I really do love. It reminds me of the leaves on ginkgo, ginkgo trees, ginkgo. I don't know. Don't know. I feel like that doesn't make sense. This could be a good one because it is sort of a, I mean, it does feel like a thicker cotton. There is black and blue, so could be kind of versatile. I wouldn't have to worry about pattern matching, which is, which, I mean, I love the plaid, but at the same time, it's kind of annoying. Now, the only downside is I need three meters and I don't know how much of this I have. So let's see. Hmm. I mean, it's wide. Hmm. Don't know. But yeah, that's really pretty. So I could use that. I mean, there's no point in saving these fabrics for best because what does that actually mean? The beauty of this one as well is look at the back. I should not have a problem with that like I did on this one. 
So yes, I actually think this is gonna be my next plan. I am going to have a go at the Cameron with this. And I'm actually very excited about that. I just thought of that on the fly. Now, my birthday is on Monday. I'm turning 43 and I am, have tried to clear my schedule so I could sew all day. So I think what I'm gonna do is get a really good start on this new shirt. I also cut out um, a Jessie T as well as a pair of pajamas using the Tilly and the Buttons Billy and the Seattle jeggings like I did before in this fabric, which frankly I don't really like, which is this. But I figured it'd be nice to use it up and um, pajamas, why not? I cut all this out when I was chatting with Claire from Stitch Hem Sew this week on a video chat. And poor Claire had a DIY accident, which caused her to, well, probably have terrible headache for the entire week, but also um, have bruised eyes. So Claire, if you're watching, I'm thinking of you and hope that you recover. But anyways, yes, I cut out all of this while I was on the phone with her because I there was no way I was going to attempt the um, continue with the shirt while trying to talk at the same time. But um, so I'll definitely get the Jesse and the pajamas sewn up. I will make a very good start on this. Actually, I'm sure that by the next Friday sews, I will be done with this. Um, we are going to Rome tomorrow night. There's a Van Gogh exhibit at um, a museum on, and we're gonna go to that on Sunday. I book tickets, so that should be fun. But aside from that, yeah, I don't have any other plans. I'm sure that um, I will think of some other things. I've got the second part to my Q1 plans coming out on Monday or Tuesday, and that's focused around the bags that I wanna get made. And um, so that should be cool. Maybe I'll get started on one of those. I do think one of the bags actually have all of the supplies I need. Um, but next week's pretty busy with work. So I'm hoping to get, like I said, a full day of sewing in on Monday and um, little bits and pieces sewn up uh, when I have time during the rest of the week. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me. If you stuck with me to the end, I really appreciate it. Um, and I really appreciate all the help and feedback and advice people gave to me in the comments from my last video. Anyway, I hope you're all well. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and I will speak to you soon. Bye.